And this is Aviv from West Coast Shaving, and today I'm here with Matt. Matt is our resident straight razor expert, as we've said in the past few videos. He's not actually an expert, but he's been shaving for 18 years. And Matt is going to talk to us today about honing. Um, so Matt, maybe you can give us like a quick recap about what we're going to do today. Okay, um, so just a little bit about honing. So when do you hone? Why do you hone? So eventually every razor will get dull and uh, we'll begin, you'll be, you know, feel it starting to pull, it won't be as smooth. Um, and when that happens, it's usually time to go to the home. So um, we'll just do a little demonstration and talk a little bit about homes. Um, so as far as bare essentials, if you're, if you're thinking about getting into straight razor shaving, uh, I would recommend at first sending the razor out to be honed or getting a razor from somewhere like West Coast Shaving who has a honing service so that your razor comes shave ready and that it's ready to go and uh, has been honed professionally. But if it's something that you want to keep it up, uh, keep up as a hobby and uh, you know you catch the bug let's say then you're gonna need to get some hones and uh, I'm just gonna give you the bare essential of what you need so uh, there are many different honing systems out there but what you really need is a hone like this I'm just gonna show you this is a synthetic hone and it's a um, there are two sides to it. So you have a coarser grit and you have a finer grit. Um, so a hone like this, uh, or I believe West Coast Shaving carries the Norton 4.8, so 4,000 grit on one side, 8,000 grit on the other, is an ex also an excellent hone. This is a Naniwa hone. It's also similarly a, um, a synthetic hone. So it cuts fairly quickly. Um, what I'm going to go into is basically touching up a razor's edge. So uh, I'm not talking about when you get a new kind of banged up razor off of eBay and you want to restore the edge that you know was pre previously unusable. Um, there you're going to use some different techniques and you might need a coarser stone. But if you came with a razor that was already sharp and uh, you were shaving with it and now it's just starting to dull. Um, I'm just going to show you what you or uh, one of the things you can do. There are many different methods to honing and I'm just going to show you what works for me. So um, I just have a yeah. few questions and you tell me if I'm wrong. The way I understand a hone, I think of it almost like sandpaper, you know, and you know, you have a sandpaper with a bigger grit and that's, that's going to, or there's sandpaper that's made to buff down things faster and then there's like finishing touches. So that's what these two sides are for. That's exactly right. So, um, you know, basically the coarser grit is going to remove more metal from the blade, from the edge, and uh, the finer grit is more for polishing. And then I also have this stone, which is called a finishing stone. There are many different kinds. Some are synthetic. This happens to be a natural finishing stone, a Belgian cotical, it's called. Um, but you can also, Norton and I believe, and Naniwa also make you know, a much higher grit. So while this is a 4.8, uh, Naniwa makes a 12,000, maybe even higher grits that will put really the final polish on your blade and make it shave ready. So, yeah, so like if you were sanding down a table, you'd use uh, sandpaper with a lower grade in the beginning to get the majority of the work done and then you're at the finishing stages and you're you're going to use a higher grid to kind of finish it, smooth it out, make it look great. That's yeah. kind of, uh, except now we're talking about a much, m we're talking about the edge of a straight razor which is is much sharper than a table, right? So you're talking right. about 3,000. Yeah, and table. it's much more delicate, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, but that's the exact same principle. So, you know, there's different grids for polishing and different grids for, you know, if you want to remove a lot of wood, you know, and the same thing applies for for uh, metal on the razor. Um, so basically, uh, I've had this soaking, and you want to soak it for about 10 minutes. And when you get a new get a new stone, so it comes from the factory, 
Again, it's not going to be ready right out of the box to use. So what you want to do is called lapping. So um, what that involves, you can get another stone that's a, a coarser grit that uh, is very flat. It's machined like perfectly flat and uh, lap the stone with it. So you're basically making the stone perfectly flat. Um, but you don't need to get it if you have an, any other stone. So like for example, this stone is my finishing stone. You can lap with this as well. So you just take two stones together and I'm just gonna drip some water on the stone and just demonstrate quickly. But these stones are already lapped, they're flat. But when you get a new stone and you're gonna do circles and you see how they're sticking together that means they're already pretty flat. So when it's hard to kind of move them, it means they're already kind of like, there's like a suction effect. Mm. Or you can do figure eights like this. So you're basically moving one stone over the other. So you want the stone to be flat so that you're not hitting any bumps or anything when you're trying to... When you're trying to hone, because you really want the hone to be perfectly flat so your edge is perfect. Mm. Makes sense. Or you can go back and forth like this. Or you can do the figure eight in the other direction. And once or you circles. Once, once you feel it's starting to stick, you know that you've yeah. done a good job. And you do see some of the material, so some of the synthetic material is like coming off and it's making a little bit of a slurry. And if you keep doing, um, you don't have to remove a whole lot, but you're basically, if there are any high points on the stone, you're taking that off. Um, another way, another trick that I've seen you can take like a pencil and make hatches across the top of the stone. And uh, then as you lap, you can see as, as long as all those hatches are gone, that means now you flatten the stone. Mm. So, and you can see where there might be a high point on the stone and you can maybe add a little bit of pressure to that point and get the stone to where you want it. Great. So, but these stones are ready to go. So I'm just gonna demonstrate honing. So, um, I like to, it's been soaking, but I want to drip some water on top of the stone. Uh, actually, this is the 3000 side. So this is a 3008. So this is for a razor. So I did notice as Jared was shaving that it wasn't gliding perfectly and the blade wasn't perfectly sharp. It was a little bit dull, a little bit draggy. So I switched out for a second pass with the razor I was using, and I'm gonna just touch this up. So what I would do, I hold it in my hand, but you can also lay it down flat. So there are different techniques. So some people lay it flat, and then use two hands to hone, to go back and forth on the stone. But what I like to do is hold it in my hand. Um, it just, I feel like I have more control when I do that. Just make sure that your fingers aren't poking up over the edge of the stone because yeah, okay, you are dragging a razor across it. So the, the basic technique is it's kind of like stropping in reverse. So whereas stropping, you're pulling the razor with the edge leading. In honing, you're going to go the edge first mm. and go down the stone. And uh, these stones are nice because they're wide. They're, uh, I believe, three inches wide which is plain enough for the razor to lay on them. You don't have to do much of an X pattern. So if you have a narrow stone, um, you have to do more of an X pattern. Just like if you have a, na a narrow strop, you have to do a little bit of an X to get the whole length of the blade. But I recommend getting spending a little more money and getting the wider stone so that uh, it just makes honing just a lot more easy. So, uh, what I'm doing is I'm laying the blade, again, like when I was stropping, flat on the stone so that the edge and the spine are touching at the same time. And I'm just going to drag it towards me down the length of the stone. So that's the basic motion. So once down, once across, and that's one lap. So one lap is once down and back. Um, so I did two. I'm going to do a total of three on the, on the lower grit. So that was three. Then I'm going to flip it over to the 8,000 side. 
and do it four times. One, that's one, down and back. Two, three, four. What I'm going to show you, this is called the pyramid progression, um, where basically you go back and forth from the lower grit to the higher grit. So now I'm going to do two on the lower side. I sharpened my knives at the water stone. How does it work for you? Good. Yeah. Yeah, you can use these. Um, that was two. And then uh, I'm going to do four on the higher grit. Mm. Two. When we were in the video earlier, you were saying you, depending on the razor, you might do this once a month or maybe up to once a week sometimes. Or even longer. It, again, it depends on the steel. So sometimes, and it also depends on how often you shave. So if, you know, if you're shaving every day, you're going to have to touch up that hone more often. Um, some people have multiple razors. They might have a seven-day set of razors where they're using... A uh, different razor every day. Uh, you know they have razors in rotation, and that'll obviously increase the length of time you have to go and hone those razors. Um, but some razors, you know, if it's a hard steel, you could go, you know, and also depending on how, let's say, thick your beard is, um, you know, you could go months and months without honing. You could go six months without honing. Um, you know, and just daily stropping. Mm. Um, so, uh, all right, so then the last progression on this would be a one and a three. So a one on the 3,000 side, and then three times on the 8,000 side. So we did two, four, no, we did three, four, two, four, one, three. One, three. Yeah, so there are different ways you can do it, too. Um, one, two, and then one more, three. It seems relatively simple. It is. I, for some reason, I, in my mind, it was going to be more difficult. It really is not more difficult than that. That is it. Now, at that point, you can shave. On an 8,000 grit, you can still get an okay shave, um, and it will still do the job. But I find that in order to get a really nice shave, you need something that's a higher grit than 8,000. You need what's called a finishing stone, like this Belgian codical. Um, this one happens to be a natural stone. It had, you know, that's mined, and then they lap it. And uh, it has, I think, garnet in it, you know, so microscopically, which sharpens the edge. Um, and then all you need now is about five to eight more strokes on the natural stone. What would the grit be on this if it wasn't natural? Like, or what is it here? Is it 12,000? I couldn't tell you. I think I also have the Naniwa 12,000, um, which is a finishing stone. I think this one is even finer than that, but not by much. So like, if the Naniwa is 12,000, I would guess that it's 15,000, but I really don't know what the right. actual grit is. But there are many different finishing stones you can get. There are even like vintage stones, these little barber homes, that most of them are very high finishing, uh, like high grade finishing stone. The only problem with them is they're usually very little. Mm. So it's a little harder to learn how to hone on them. Uh, these, because they're like wide, they're big, um, but still like okay to hold in your hand like this, which I like to do. Um, it just makes it easier because you don't have to like do an X when you go through. What I like to do, instead of going like straight perpendicular, perpendicular to the stone, I like to angle the blade just a little bit. Mm -hmm. See that? And I know that the blade is getting sharp when, I don't know if the camera is picking this up, but when it's kind of plowing the water, pushing the water along, mm -hmm. as you can see across the surface of the stone. Three, four, five. Now another technique some people like that they don't like to hold the stone, they might lay it flat on the table like so, 
and just go down like this and maybe put a tiny bit of, and that's the other thing. When, you, when you're honing, you don't want to put a lot of pressure. Mm. Really just the weight of the blade, maybe a little bit more, that's it. Just like stropping, you don't want pressure. So um, some people like to just put, you know, use two hands and come down like this. Or you can do it with one hand, like that. Hmm. Is so, anyone just down, down, down? Oh, in one direction? Uh, well, you might want to do a technique like that more if you're trying, you know, if the razor hasn't been honed yet um, and you're trying to set the bevel, um, typically with a higher grit than this. So with the finishing stone, you're pretty much just going to go back and forth. When the blade is already very sharp, it's almost ready to use. You just want to polish that edge and really just five to eight strokes on a finishing stone and then you should be good to go. Now to test the blade, um, it's going to wipe. Uh, there are many different ways to test the blade. The, really the only method, the ultimate test, is shaving with it. So that's how you know it's ready when you uh, take it and you try to shave with it. If it feels comfortable, then it's ready and it's good. You did a good job. But some other tests. Um, one is the arm hair test. So you basically, luckily, I have some arm hair. Mm. This and isn't Jared level arm hair, but it's close. And uh, you basically just shave the arm hair a little bit. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see, but it's popping, the hairs are just popping off. Mm. You're, not, you're not actually going against the skin, you're just kind of seeing I, if it'll cut hairs. It's cutting hair, and I'm not even going against the skin. I'm just catching them in mid-hair, and it is, they're just popping off. That means this thing is sharp and ready to go. Got it. Nice. Although the ultimate test is shaving. Uh, another way to do it is, luckily I'm losing my hair, so I should be able to get a hair. Let's see. I try to get a hair. Uh, where you just try to cut it like yeah, you know, it's yeah. called the hanging hair test. I can show you if I can get a hair. Actually, oh, there we go. That one. This we're definitely not gonna catch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you take the hair, and you can test different parts of the blade as well. So up at the toe, or you can test the heel just to make sure that it's catching the, ha the hair and it's... I'm going to go this way. Okay. Basically that it, that it cuts That it's it. catching the hair and cutting it. Which... Mm, it's not cutting it. <laughs> so here, this one is not passing the hanging hair test. But it did cut the arm hair. Mm. So, I don't know. At this point, I would test the razor, and then if it's still not comfortable, or it still feels like it needs to be sharper, I would just go back to the hone, maybe do another 1-3, and another maybe 4 or 5 on the finishing stone, and try it again. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, that's basically it. So, it doesn't take a lot of time. You know, you do have to soak this stone. Finishing stones usually don't have to soak. You just put a little water on top of them. Mm. Um, but soak it for 10 minutes and it's ready to go. And then uh, you don't have to lap them all that often. I would say maybe, you know, if you're honing a lot, you know, you might need to lap it more often. But, you know, uh, for using one razor with daily use, maybe you lap it once a year, you know. It's not, and you don't have to take a lot off usually. Mm. It's uh, pretty, you know, if you get a home like this, it'll last you a lifetime. If you're not, as long as you're not professionally honing razors or like restoring hundreds of razors, then, you know, people who do that, they go through a lot of these stones. But um, for basic everyday use, this will last forever. Super. So that's honing from Matt. Uh, when to do it, how to do it. Thank you very much for joining us today. It's been a lot of fun. This is the end of a full day of, of recording. And um, yeah, see you next time. All right. Thanks for having me.